Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how you can check to see if a character is standing on the floor, bumping into the ceiling, or is on the wall inside of Godot. So there are some very convenient functions you can use to do this quite easily with a kinematic body 2D. So in the last tutorial, I went ahead and built out this little player game object, and the character is able to move around left and right and jump. So we can see moving left and right and then jumping. But one major problem with the jump is that we can keep jumping if we're in the air with no limitations whatsoever. Now, there's definitely cases where you'd want to be able to double jump. But in this case, we want a ground jump where you can only do it when you're on the ground. So let's go ahead and close this out here and go over to the player script. So as I mentioned before, the function is on floor is built into the kinematic body 2D. So we can check that on the body directly. If we want to get the autocomplete for that function, we could do self dot is on floor and then the parentheses and we can do and and to make it so that both of these are a requirement to jump. Technically speaking, we could drop the self in the period since that's already implied when we're running a function within this object, this kinematic body 2D script. Uh, but let's leave it like that for now and give it a test. So let's hit play. And when we're in the game mode, we move around, we hit spacebar, and we're not going to see any jumping. So what we need to do down here with this move and slide is to add snapping to it by changing the function to move and slide with snap. And then over here at the third parameter, we need to put in vector three dot up. And what this will make happen is that when we run, okay, sorry, vector two dot up, we're working with 2D, so that makes sense. And then what this will do is that when we do these move functions and our character bumps up against something like the floor where the move would make it move into the floor normally it's going to snap to that pixel perfect position sitting right on top of it and then that should trigger is on floor to be true so now if we go ahead and hit play we can still move around of course so it doesn't look any different on the surface and notice that when I keep hitting the space bar over and over again, that the jump only runs when the character is actually sitting on top of those blocks. In other words, is on the floor is true. So that is giving us exactly what we want. Now, if you needed to have an aerial jump or a second jump, then you could just have some similar code in here where you check that it's not on the floor. It's actually in the air. Jump is pressed and any extra conditions that you might want, like maybe only limiting it to one jump per air. Maybe, for instance, keeping a track of how many jumps have occurred since the character jumped into the air. And then whenever is on floor is true again, you just reset that. That way you can make sure that the character only jumps a certain number of times while it's in the air, whether that's one air jump or two air jumps or however many you need. Okay, the next thing we'll try here is to check if the character is on the wall and then make it so that the character can stick onto the wall when it lands there. So what we're going to need is to separate our Y move code into a few separate chunks. Now, if you get more complicated than this, creating a state machine for yourself might make more sense than cramming everything in one script. But since we're basically just keeping it really simple for this video, just going to put these lines here. So we want to check if the character is on the wall. So if is on wall is true, Notice I just dropped the self period in this case. It's not necessary. So we have the semicolon in the next line for if that's true, then we run this code. But if we are not on the wall, then I do want to continue to add the gravity to the next move for the character. So the reason for this is that we only want the gravity to affect the character if it's not sticking to the wall. But if the character is supposed to be sticking to the wall, then we want the next move dot y to be zero. Now let's go to the level design. I'll click on the level and we need some more blocks here to serve as a wall. So I will just drag these in here, maybe one over here for good measure. And at some point we'll need one here to check for it is on the ceiling. So I'll go ahead and hit play. So our character is going to drop to the ground initially. That's all well and good. Let's jump at the wall and see if we stick. And there we go. We're sticking to the wall. Now, if I press right, it'll fall off the wall immediately. Since we're only stopping the vertical movement while the character's on the wall. Note that when I hit spacebar here, there's no jumping, there's no Y movement. We can uh, change that so that we can kind of do a wall jump as well. It's not too hard. So let's go ahead and hit stop. 
go back to the script mode. So while the character is on the wall, we want to see if is jump pressed. So it's going to be the same jump key, whether it's on the ground or in the air. And then we want to take the next move Y and change that to be a negative jump impulse value. So the, this is the same value we were using down here. We could have a separate one for the wall jump if we want the character to be able to jump a shorter vertical distance when it's on the wall than on the ground or we can just use the same value in this case we'll use the same value now one other thing uh, we don't want the character to necessarily jump straight up uh, this is more of a design choice but having the character be able to kind of jump off the wall when we hit jump would be nice so this will make it move upwards but we want it to jump away from the wall as well when we uh, hit when we hit the jump button so in order to jump away from the wall, we need to have some idea of where the character is in relation to the wall. One way to do that would be to use Raycast checks, which I'm going to say go a little beyond this tutorial. A cheaper way that can work okay for right now is to check which direction the sprite is facing. So if we jump onto the wall and the wall is on the left, then presumably speaking, the character is facing the left because the wall is on the left. So I, had to, so I had to jump to the left to get onto the wall that's on the left. So we can check whether the character is facing left or right and use that to determine whether we should have the character move horizontally to the left or the right uh, when we go ahead and hit the jump button. Now, I admit doing raycasts is probably better, but uh, this is just you know a quick intro to the idea. So let's go ahead and look at the player scene and we can see we have this icon down here. I'm actually going to rename that to sprite, which is what it would naturally be called if we had manually created a sprite and then added the texture in here rather than dropping the icon.png into here. That's why the name was different. So presumably sprite being the standard name, we can reference that sprite with a dollar sign sprite, which is going to grab the item named sprite as a child of the player. So really easy to reference that. And then we need to see if the sprite is flipped in the horizontal or not. So in this case, if the sprite is flipped horizontally, then we want to move one direction. Else, we want to move in a different direction. So the next move dot x and next move dot x up here as well is going to equal uh, a positive or negative value that we set up here. So I'm going to declare a new variable. We'll call it export float var and I'll call it wall jump horizontal impulse and let's set that to 350 to start so i'll take this value and we'll put it down here so we just need to know if this should be positive or a negative now in this case we could assume that this sprite, if uh, you have a 2d platformer character faces right by default so right being the positive direction and flip h would be false because your character faces right by default uh, this is one of those areas. So presumably, the character wouldn't be flipped because your sprites face right by default, or at least your character sprite does. So we'll make this the positive value. And then for the opposite of that, if the character sprite is flipped, then we want to actually make the X move the negative value here. So let's go ahead and save it and try giving it a run. So I'll jump onto the wall and let's hit spacebar. So you can see it does kind of jump off, but it's not working exactly as expected. So let's go ahead and jump at the wall and then try hitting our jump key. So we can see that there is some kind of jump here, but it's not really moving properly. In fact, we would more expect the character to move away across multiple frames, but we can see that as soon as we hit space once, the horizontal movement gets reset on each frame. We can see in the script that it's because of this line. So whatever the velocity was previously we're taking the x move and we're setting that to a new value uh, every single frame that this physics process runs so what we'd actually want to do is either have this be an addition based on the axis or you know some kind of linear interpolation a way of not reaching the max speed immediately uh, but rather over time so in this case i would think that the main thing we really need is to make it a plus equals of this value rather than setting it directly. So in other words, some of the X movement from the previous frame will carry over here. So if we have a jump impulse, it won't be immediately reset to whatever this value is. 
but we can add this gradually. But obviously, if we take this move speed from before and we add it on every frame with no limit, then the character is just going to run off the edge. So what we'd probably actually want to have is a max speed. Let's see, x max speed. And we'll set this to the 500 from before. But the move speed will make this like 75. This could actually be called acceleration if you want. So what we're going to want to do here with this axis X is to clamp it between two values for the max move speed over here. So let's do clamp and we'll have some value as the value that we're trying to set with limits. And we're going to have negative max speed as the min. So negative X max speed and then X max speed as the maximum. Now, because we're going to clamp, we're not going to make it plus equals here, but we're going to just make it equals. And then we can take the current value over here and just put this in here to be added to whatever addition we're getting from axis x times move speed. So let's see, next move dot x plus. Let's just add some parentheses here. So in other words, we're taking the last frame move speed and we're adding the move speed uh, modified by the direction which we're trying to move the character and we have these speed limits now all of this is going to be applied to the ground speed of course if we do get to this point where uh, we are pressing jump in the air then this is just going to be set with no clamping so we shouldn't run into an issue if the x max speed is lower than this jump impulse so one little issue i do see with this code is that because of the clamp value whatever the uh, move was from the last frame if that happens to be higher based on a higher jump impulse than uh, this max speed, then it's gonna limit you back down to whatever this clamp max is, the X max speed or uh, positive or negative X max speed that is. And in this case, it will technically work, but that would be something to think about going forward. So let's give this a try and uh, see how it looks. So when we move our character left and right, it can still move pretty much fine. After all, it is adding the 75 move speed on every frame. Okay. Now, of course, one other thing we need to do for all of this is that we haven't actually set whether the sprite is going to flip to the right or left. We can do that pretty easily, though. Basically, after we get our var axis inputs, so we're going to have this axis x input here, we can go ahead and check it to see if it is greater than zero. So if it's greater than zero, the character is going to be trying to move to the right, which means that we want the dollar sign sprite dot flip h or horizontal value to be false because it's facing the right and the sprite faces the right and then the sprite faces the right by default so uh, we don't want that to be flipped and otherwise we want to see if it is below zero and then if that's the case then we're going to flip it now we don't check for if it's at zero specifically so this needs to be a l if for else if making there be a condition here and uh, the reason why we don't check for if it's at zero is because we don't want to be flipping the sprite if there's no player input. It should just face the direction it was facing before you stopped moving. So uh, only if there's an input for positive or negative here. So overall, when we hit play and we can kind of move our character around, we can jump on the wall, hit space. The jump off is kind of nice. It's not stopping the horizontal movement immediately. We can jump over here, get the same idea going on. Our character is a little bit slidey, I have to admit. So uh, probably we'd want to put something in where if we are idling, we would slow the character down towards zero. So what we could do to have the character slow down when we stop pressing is we can check here if uh, the axis X does not equal zero, then uh, we're going to move. If the axis X is zero, which is basically when that condition isn't true, then we can say that the next x move is going to quickly slow down to zero, but not immediately. Uh, you could just make it zero flat out if you wanted to, but I'm going to use the lerp function for linear interpolation. So we'll take the current next move, we're going to move it towards zero, and then for the weight, I'm going to put it at uh, something like 0.8, I guess. So that means on every frame, it's going to move 80% of the way down to zero from where it is currently. So after two frames of idling, it should already be 96% of the way to zero, I think, if I'm doing the math right. So let's go ahead and hit play and see how this works. So I'll hit play, let go, and uh, we can see our character stops 
very quickly now. So there's still some sliding on the edges here based on the shape of the collision shapes. So optionally, you could change that. If you really wanted it to just be flat on top, you could make the character and all the other shapes rectangles. Um, of course, you'll have to work around that. But in terms of stopping, it stops very, very fast. Perhaps even too fast. Let's make this something more like 0.6. Go ahead and test it out. And I'll just move around here. And I think that's a good stopping speed. It, it takes a few frames to get there, but it's not immediate. So let's go ahead and hit stop. So the last bit of code we're going to add in here is to check if the character's on the ceiling. And if it bumps into the ceiling, then we're going to start moving the character in the opposite direction, going downwards towards whatever's below it, ground or pit or so on and so forth. So uh, we'll put this up here at the top so that this code runs uh, before it checks if it's on the wall. So the ceiling, so that if it's on the ceiling takes priority here. And we'll check if is on ceiling and then if it's on the ceiling, then we'll make the next move dot y equal to the gravity value. So this will make it so that not only does the upwards velocity stop, but that we immediately add in some gravity pushing it towards the opposite direction back down towards the ground. So the switch in movement is going to be very fast. It'll immediately start going downwards the opposite direction. And for this code down here below, the is on wall to not run, we need to put else or l if rather else if is on wall. So this and this is only going to run if the character is not already on the ceiling. So when we go into play mode, we can hit space. I can jump at the block. You can see that when we hit it, the character immediately falls very fast. Uh, when we would get kind of stuck here normally. Uh, this probably would trigger is on wall to be true, kind of being on the corner here. But because we check for ceiling first, it's just going to go down instead of sticking to the wall. And we can see that when we jump normally with open air, that that descent back down when we reach that uh, peak air point is much faster. Now, um, because I added in the slowing down for when you let go of the keyboard here, where the character just stops moving, the linear interpolation it kind of messes a little bit with our whoop, it kind of it kind of messes a little bit with our wall jumping uh once again it's slowing it back down as the move x move goes towards zero so this is kind of where state machines start to become a little more useful where you don't want one bit of code you've written to mess with your other code so you can have specific code run depending on its state so if it's in the air you have one set of code run and then if you're on the ground you have another set of code run but for right now we can have a quick fix here which is that we'll only slow the character down automatically when we let go of the movement if the character is on the ground so let's do if is on floor here and add the tab here for this code to run only in that case. So if we're in the air and we let go of the keyboard, the character won't immediately start slowing down, only if it's on the ground. So let's go ahead and hit play. And now if we jump at the wall, hit spacebar, we can get that wall jump function again. But if we're on the ground and we let go, then we get that expected drop to zero in player movement. So we've used those three checks that kinematic body 2Ds have. We can check if on floor is true. We can check if we're on the wall for things like wall jumping or sticking to the wall. Very handy. And we can check if we're hitting the ceiling for things like dropping back down towards the ground at a very fast pace. So hopefully all of you can see in this tutorial how it can be pretty easy to set up some very basic platformer controls inside of Godot. And hopefully I've given you a decent idea of where to start looking at that. So I've been Chris. Thanks for watching. And I will see all of you in my future video content.